Well, here's an interesting, disturbing story from the downtown east side rant vent. And I appreciate your rant vent. Because, uh, you gotta talk up. Sure, you get harassed when you talk up. You get robbed, you get hurt, your dog gets death threats, including you. I know that most are not naive to the conditions of the downtown east side. I've worked there for several years before finally burning out. Oh my god. I used to volunteer for free. What a dumbass thing that was. And the people robbed me and robbed other people while we were volunteering. So yeah, yeah. It's a sucking hole of a mom monument designed to vacuum up sympathy and cash from all angles by the poverty pimps. But this isn't about me or what I think. One of my friends is a 24 hour, is a frontline worker at a 24 hour drop and need to stay a very vague to prevent anyone from being identified. They get paid about $20 an hour, four days a week, no benefits, not one penny of extra perk because they go for Sarah Bly. Oh, shouldn't have popped that in there or, or did I just read something that doesn't exist? No extended help and get called to long-winded organizational meetings of how to take over little native towns several times on their days off. Their entire day consists of migrating violence, yes, filth, personal conflicts, and just being in general very awful conditions. 20 years ago, OPS wasn't down here, and it was better. My friend is a supervisor. Many of the staff they supervise are no barrier hires, meaning they're all kinds of fucked up that belong in a mental hospital, but they're working, doing their jobs. Staff often show up high, passed out in the bathrooms, get into trouble with clients, who are also all kinds of fucked up and need a mental hospital with professional help to get off the hard fucking drugs. Crime happens regular, duh. More scarier is the social dynamics where bullies will gang up on a weak, vulnerable clients, steal their stuff, or just beat them. Yeah, we know about that. Nothing really gets done. Sometimes clients threaten my friend when they have to enforce rules. Don't worry, they fucking threaten us. You know, we get death threats just coming in and out of our shit show building their clients and their staff. Their staff robbed me. Sicked by uh, Sarah Bly. No less. And the government pays her. White, fat, privileged ass. Something I can't afford to have is a fat ass. So when I sit too long in my apartment because I'm trapped, my butt always hurts. And I don't even qualify for, you know, a butt implant to make it more comfortable for me. She doesn't have those issues. The nature of the neighborhood really means you have to watch your back, especially if you live and work there like my friend. No kidding. A cop caught out of his car, one cop, and he nearly got beat the fuck up. He had to jump back into his car. Yeah, and he had a gun. He was a nice guy, because if he was me, it was me, and I was a cop, I would have pulled out my gun and shot that gun. Would have had no problem shooting anyone else that got involved. We're fed up. They've killed so many of our friends, we don't even want to have friends down here anymore. They'll probably just die again. My friend who's worked in social services, that's the government that's created this shit show and are paid to create this shit show in their life is approaching retirement age, has serious health conditions where they cannot constrain themselves and have to take precautions doing strenuous activity. They look fantastic, so their disability is often ignored. 
Yeah, if I look healthy, my disabilities are often ignored. Oh, and the fact that I'm old. Down here. And no one, none of the poverty pimps will apologize. We're sorry, Debbie, that you feel so bad that that you qualify for euthanization. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to sick some of our fucktards after you. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to rob you, make you feel horrible. I'm sorry about the pop-ups. There's nothing I can do about it. They are put in situations that can be fatal. Of course they are. Their employee does nothing to make sure that they are not put in positions where they are forced to exert themselves. There is a severe staff shortage. Oh my God, they should be nice to people like me so that we could get paid 20 bucks an hour part time. You know, but no, it's too dangerous for us to go in there. So it's all hands on deck, trained or untrained, hire sober. And you know what else? Those fucktards came on to druggies. Probably Sarah Bly opened up a, a real quick YouTube channel, but it was one of the oops people without a doubt because you know why they were defending Trey like the man can't defend himself. But he can stalk women, a senior citizen woman. Put it on a secret you or a Facebook channel. Send his staff after me. Oh yeah. Really pathetic. And when that didn't work, he tried calling me racist. A German Jewish person that qualifies for euthanization Canada. Yeah, you're you're a fucking racist. I'm not even a white privileged person. I I do not have white privileged anything. I don't have East Indian privilege. They got more privilege than me. China, town over there has got more privilege than me. Hell, Ukraine migrants have more privilege than me. I don't have any privilege. That's why I suffer every day. My favorite position, favorite thing to do downtown east side Vancouver is sleep. That's the only time that I don't feel anything or any pain is sleep. They recently described pretty much how all lower management and staff are quitting due to extreme shitty conditions to the extreme... Oh, sorry. I'm rereading that. And poorly run Deftone administration who barely knows what happens on the floor. So they don't even have downtown east side their basic work safe. Any one of these people could be phoning work safe. Now... <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm really sick. So, yeah, the, the city, the government funds these people because they want us dead. It's the only reason why they would fund these people. They look at the figures and see the death rate and they throw more fire on the fucking fire. Oh, and take away our uh, fire code. They recently described pretty well, okay, yeah, read that. As a result, these mass quittings is more organizational meetings held on my friend's day off. And they don't get paid to attend. Oh, they get paid to attend. Oh, they do. Okay. Because I had to go to meetings when I was a salesperson. And we didn't get paid to attend. Sometimes we get free drinks and free food, but that's it. They get paid to attend, but straight after shifts in a war zone. It is a war zone. Days off must be respected. Oh, absolutely, buddy. Days off have to, you have to have recuperating time. First of all, you're entering a demonic energy, which is totally different than what most people can handle, unless you are a true demonic, you know, and you promote that shit, which I'm sure Sarah Bly does. I've, I've caught in her lots. My friend hardly has any energy to take care of themselves or their family who depend on them. We know that's not Trey. It seems that even though all nonprofits are lined up within a six to eight city blocks, they don't know who their neighbors are. Yeah, oh, actually, they do, and they harass us if we talk back. 
okay? Harass us, rob us, stab us. Every time I talk to my friend, it's another fucked up story. Just like my YouTube channel. Involving knives, needles, setting fires. What did I tell you guys? We don't have a fire coat down here. Broken bottles, shit. So much feces. Oh, they made me sick for three years. I have a flop in my stomach that doesn't work. I could have had an operation, but all my life, no doctor could actually diagnose it. Three years of extreme pain, breathing in feces and urine, and going to the hospital, you know, in an ambulance, and not even able to take Tylenol or anything like that. Vomiting for three years, fucked up my teeth, and not one of the poverty pimps can say sorry that created it. People, staff and clients dropping like flies from overdoses. People literally stealing clothes off other people. Well, we got that already on YouTube under my window. Oh, and donations constantly picked through by wayward staff and their friends. That's called stealing. My friend's eight-hour day sounds like a war zone. No wonder why when they have a fire over there, I get mad at the firemen. You know, government's paying for them to torture us. I wished I could get a lawyer to take them to court. Everybody involved in this poverty pimpness. I understand there are many professionals that involve extreme environments, paramedics, ER staff, etc. These possessions are quite thankless. But at least they are trained medical staff. My friend is none of these. They are very good with people and well informed on services to get clients given how none of them nonprofits seem to want to work together. One thing my friend does on their own time is collect brochures from other places and gives it to the others th so they can understand how their own city works. Ah, oh, shame on you, Vancouver. Shame on you. Shame on you. Yeah. Wait. Colonialism is just thriving down here. Even in competition for the government funds with each other. Can't even work with each other. Unbelievable. White privileged people smiling that are at the top positions of these fucktard charities. No one else. It's amazing how these non-profits don't even know what organization occupies the space next door. That's because they're drugged up, buddy. This seems so fucked up. Is this normal? I've worked in the area for several years. It used to be a miserable place, but now it's become a dangerous, unforgiving, and thankless place. Every week, I speak to my friend. It's a new series of horror stories. Every day is so fucked up there. I've lost many people due to violence and filth in the downtown East End, and I don't want to lose my friend to stupidity and apathy. Apathy is just just all over here, dude. It, it just radiates from all the uh, white privileged colonialist fucktards and their charities. Every charity down here, except for the downtown East Side women. Okay, let's take that charity out of here. But every charity with the hard drugs is a fucked up fuck show. They never talk to the people that live inside. They actually tell us it's really dangerous to live inside. Yet all the stabbings and murders I see are outside. All the fucked up shit I see outside. Rarely ever in my building. Outside. Now the druggies have moved into my building and we got homicidal writings in our hallway kill the old people oh yay i'm an old person yeah or you fucking move and anti-gay slogans and we have oops staff and they look really bad condition and they work there they look like they need a mental hospital badly 
in their own words, dealers are the only consistent thing in this neighborhood. Now the government said is a dealer. Is this normal? It's horrible to consistently hear a million dollars poured into the downtown east side every day. You know what? It's got to be two million more now. It's probably three million a day. Where does this money go? How can it be spent? How can there be so much well-dressed, well-fed administration with a fat butt in this ridiculous place that doesn't need a butt transplant? Or a, a, a butt, you know, enhancement so they can sit on their fucking seats while they're trapped in their homes because it's too fucking dangerous to go out. How can I make a difference? Well, me personally, I see a bomb making the best difference. That's all, that's where I'm at, okay? After living on Hastings Street for over th a little over three years, that's. I, I just beg other countries to bomb us. I've given up on Canadians. How could you build a shit show like this? I tried my, tried working there, doing my best, getting nothing out of it. Half of my clients are dead now. I've seen more people die at my job than working in a terminal care hospice. Okay, so, you know, buddy, we didn't know that because they tell us that uh, people aren't dying at the job site. They only lost one person in years. That's what they're claiming, which I kind of feared was a lie. Every single Asian person that I know lives there has faced a stupid uptick in racially motivated violence. Oh. Honey, you forgot the senior citizen violence, women violence, and gay violence now. And these incidents are not reported because no one is naive to think that police are actually going to make a difference. Amen, buddy. Amen. I got robbed. Age 60 years old. Police didn't even show up. Had to fight two men and a woman. Couldn't get out of bed for a week. Blew out my knee. Everybody in my building ran away that works here. All we have is security. The woman in the wheelchair that runs this shit show ran away. Somebody punched her. I don't blame her. Take time off. We don't get any time off. But what I get is harassed. And apparently they do it to other people. Because I don't like the neighborhood and I want it better. You know, not much better, just pre-pandemic level. Just last week, an Asian senior of mine was chased with a broken bottle for not having any money while being robbed. Oh, fuck. No wonder why I don't want to go out. What the fuck is going on? I feel disgusted to see all the luxury funded by money laundering just a few blocks away. People seem more interested in buying brand names or being seen in stupid overpriced restaurants. But no one really talks about the ugly toll that is happening right next to all that luxury. It's really gross. I know, buddy. I know. I watched Reacted today and I had a crying spell for over an hour. It's not just here, buddy. They're building a euthanization. One lady went to the hospital, turned out she had cancer, and they wanted to euthanize her. She got saved by American Medical. They didn't want to operate, do a life-saving operation on her, and they don't want to bring the unjabbed doctors and, and staff back. You don't judge a place by its wealth. You judge by how it treats its vulnerable. Amen, dude. Judging by this hellhole that is the downtown, getting worse by day. It is, it is. I can tell you by experience. Vancouver is a harsh, heartless, cash-hungry, predatory place that uses uh, charities as a cover. Why else would there be so much upper management having meeting after meeting when there is no staff on the floor to actually help people? Thanks for reading. I don't expect any real answers except for trolls. 
and that's fine. Better troll online than be a real troll leeching non-profit funding in the shittiest neighborhood in the country, which is Canada. Thank you from all for sharing. I can't read you anymore. I'm too tired. I'm reading in my head. But I'm going slow so you can read. Of course the media is uh, fully aware of this bullshit that happens, dude. I caught them making fake news. In fact, they tried to say the druggies living in tents that were pooping and peeing under their, in our neighborhood and, and had guns and and swords and freaking axes and you know they tried to say those were regular poor people that regular poor people like me that I'm gonna act like that and I've never acted like that I'm a regular poor person now a senior oh Somebody gave me a like. What we needed was professional help. Not mostly white, privileged, colonialist, racist fucktards to do this to our neighborhood that they couldn't do in their own neighborhood. In their own privileged neighborhood. If you don't think downtown east side's is extreme racism from Canada. I think you haven't done enough research. Or you're in complete denial 